Hi everybody, welcome back to the painting channel. Today I'm going to be doing a lovely portrait of a pelican. So let's roll that intro. Let's see how we get on. Hi guys and uh, welcome back to the channel. Now as I said just now, I'm going to be doing this lovely little portrait of a pelican this afternoon for you. And it is just a headshot. I felt that I just wanted to try and get as much done as quickly as possible without going into the whole bird as a painting. So without further ado, let's get on. Let's see what happens. Okay, so before we crack on, let's just have a quick look at the palette contents. Now, the details of the whole of this palette are in the Show More tab underneath this and every other video. Although, I've got to be honest, I have actually thrown a few more colours in. There's a green there, I'm not quite sure where it's from, where it turned up from, but I've put it in there just to play with. I've got a sack green I've put in there today and Naples yellow. don't use any of these normally, but I had three holes and I felt like indulging myself. So whether or not they get used, I don't know, but they will be added to the list of colors on the palette. Now, as for brushes, well, as always, I'm using Rosemary and Company. They're red dots, so they're synthetic, vegan friendly and lovely to use. Now, the only exception to that one is this one which is an old Winsor & Newton Series 7. Now this is a high quality sable. I've had it years, as you can see. It's falling apart slowly, but the brush keeps a lovely point. So that is for detail, should I need it. I've got a rigger, I've got two large sizes and a small round. Hopefully we won't need any more, but they're all rosemary, they're all red dot. And if you go onto her website, and you choose any brushes, whether it be watercolor, oil, or anything else, then on checkout, if you look under the affiliate link and put my name, Paul Apps, in unbroken capitals, that would be fantastic. I get a little thank you from Rosemary for plugging the brushes, but I always say to you guys that I never ever plug any products that I don't personally use myself or enjoy. So rest assured, these are fantastic brushes. All right, so before we start adding anything else color-wise, I just want to finish off a couple of points here. One, I've got an error on the thing. I'm just going to lift some of this out. It's quite heavy. And we're going to start adding the lightest colors first. Now for that, I'm going to be using a little bit of yellow and I'm going to be using very, very weak solutions to start with. I'm just going to put the yellow in and I'm going to put a little bit of yellow ochre to that just to take it off the pure yellow, but I do need to make enough of it and I haven't actually made nearly enough. I always tell you guys to make more than enough than you need for the job. We're going to come in with a few other colors, just simple little color statements, little um, sort of simple color notes just to make and break up some of that head feathering. But I quite like what we've got so far. Very, very soft. I'm going to bring that same color down through this part of the bill. I'm going to come right up into here, almost up to the eye. doesn't matter too much. Just soften that there. But just bring this up so far and then it doesn't matter really because you are of course coming in with darker colors but this is a nice base color a little bit more violet coming down this way just to take that into that area there Thank you. 
touch of that red again just a little bit of touch of red and orange that's way too strong as it is let's lose some of that there let's drop into there a little bit more orange this time and let that come through there and set itself up for later we've got to put more in that come down there on that part of the beak okay and i'm going to just tap into some of that because there are sort of quite a bit of light colors running through that so i'm just gonna i don't want that hair there get rid of that i think it's still on the paper not a problem but i'm going to leave a little bit of white and a little bit of the orange in place so that you get that lovely mottling effect on that part of the uh, bill and a little bit of orange just going to suggest that at this stage we can strengthen it later like that there and we've got a little bit of color in there which we will strengthen again later on just building up the information very very slowly so that we don't leap ahead and wish we hadn't done so it's easily done okay now there's a little bit of water in there maybe a little too much keep an eye on this area because it could start pushing color forward of itself so bring that down and come back in with a stronger color use a little bit of that blue up that i used before i uh, didn't want to use before <laughs> i'm just going to come and touch some of that dark color in there so that takes up that excess water and shouldn't cause me a cauliflower issue it is easily done all right so far so good and i am starting to think about the background as well and i have to do so now because i've got a dirty mark from painting there which i really didn't want This is when you do need to have a darn good point on your brush because it can cause you to have an issue if you don't. All right, I quite like that. I'm going to put a little bit of quinacridone gold with that red, making a nice yellow, a little bit of an olivey yellow in the end of this beak. I'll put that in there, let that settle down before we touch it again. Now what I will do is I want to leave a little high spot of light. Now if I leave it as it is, I'm going to lose that. So let's just take some of that material out. Damp brush, or if you're very clever with a piece of tissue, you can dab it into the right place. But I'm going to use the end of the brush just to lift a little bit of that out so that we have a nice piece of almost white paper going back in there and we salvage and left that lovely little bit of highlight there. Okay, so I'm going to come in with a little bit of a stronger color, but it's sort of underneath some of these feathers. I don't want to lose all of it. But you can quite happily pick up a, a thinner brush 
Oh, good lord. Ah, that's just wrecking. Wrecked everything, I think. I just picked up some green paint and that was not required. Let's just see if we can't get out of this one. And it's going to take a little bit of work, I think, and I may not achieve it. And that would be a shame because this is working out quite nicely. The trouble is, by working this eradicator like this, you are actually messing up the beautiful um, sizing on the paper. It doesn't like this sort of punishment. And I think I've got a bit of an issue there. What I might have to do with that is come back in with a little bit of body colour later on. It's a great shame. It happened. That's probably because I shouldn't have put that paint in. It's probably telling me I should have left that paint back in the tube and not put it in. See if I can do a little bit more damage limitation on this one. No. It's a big staining colour, so it has made its presence felt. Not a lot I can do about it, but I might just do... Yeah. I'll see if I can't lessen that with a little bit of body colour. And then go back over this with a little tint of colour. Ah, oh, look at that. Cracking. All right, I'm going to leave that alone, let that dry off, and hopefully we just might have got away with it. <laughs> that was a wobbly moment, got to say. Let's put this fine brush down again, and let's revert back to where we were. And start looking at adding more detail in now. So I think... Not so strong of colour, so a bit more water to that. Just gently play around with that. We don't want to lose all our light. There's a lot of light in there and I'm in danger of taking that off and losing it. So I'm just softening that mark down through there. So we've got the sense of darkness and I think it needs to be a little bit more in terms of yellowness and orangeness and more ochreish. <laughs> Can I get any better a description of a colour mix? I doubt it. There we go. I'm just going to come in here with a simple wash down. That's what I was looking for. That lovely little bit of um, sort of mustardy yellowish colour. Almost a green in places. I don't want to lose that light, that's the thing. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to suggest a little darker in places, but it's not going to completely give way to 
all the um, sort of darts that we could have. I'm just sort of suggesting it. Don't want to replace one color with another. There's very little point in putting the other one on if I was going to do that. So you put a successive layer on, but you put less marks on each successive time. Come in there with a little bit more of a light into there and there. A couple of those lines coming right across and join in. Right, let's come back in with that sepia and we're just going to suggest more dark up through this little part of the beak here quite a strong color and I don't really want it that deep it's a very much a pencil line so a little bit thicker paint so that it doesn't fade back to nothing so you don't mean you have to do it again hopefully and just look to see where that line comes down and it sort of gets quite dark through here but I'm going to come in and I'm going to try and make it sort of almost one mark as it comes down This is detail overload. <laughs> I didn't ever imagine making it as detailed as this when I started. Never mind. It is what it is. All right, I'm just going to come in here and I'm just tapping down now, just suggesting some of those little marks on the forehead. I'm sure there's a lot more I can be doing. I've got to come back in with some darks, but what I'm going to do is going to mix up a dark. Now it's going to be a sort of chocolatey brown color. And I don't really want to make it too thick. I want it to be there, but I don't want it too thick. Now I want to cool it down a little bit as well. I'll add in a little bit of that blue, a little bit of that red in there. I'm going to leave that brush there. And I'm possibly going to come in with a bigger brush and I want to sort of come in here like this now I've got to be careful here because I've got to make sure everything I touch is dry or else I'm going to end up wishing I hadn't done it like that bring it all the way down carefully as I can but I don't really want to take it too far I want to put a bit of pale blue in and come back in with some of this lovely cobalt blue 
I want to drop that into some of this here and I'm not making a solid background. All right, I'm going to live with that. And I'm going to come back in with the smaller brush. A lot of blue paint on that at the moment. Let's get rid of that. Let's come back in with some brown paint. A little bit of sepia paint. And we've got a nice layer coming in with our feathers of the body. Now I'm going to come in and I want to suggest that some of these lovely chest feathers are sort of, um, sort of laying down over this bird's uh, plumage as it were. So there's lots of little darks in here suggesting just that and I'm bringing them forward and there's also a lot of light colors. These feathers have got lovely little white um, parts to the feather which I don't want to lose those. So, okay, so once this area has dried off completely naturally, and uh, I do say naturally because uh, if you do it unnaturally, if you use a hairdryer on it, then you're going to stop the paint moving. Leave it, let it move, let it do what it wants to do until it has actually dried. And then go back in, as I will do, and we'll just put the finishing touches to dark areas that we need them, and just finish off bringing this bird to life, I hope. Catch you all soon. Okay, so it's nearly dry. It's not quite dry, but it's almost dry enough. And I think we can continue with a great deal of care. And of course, care is my middle name. So <laughs> without further ado, let's carry on. Now, what I'm doing now is I'm actually mixing up some sepia and I'm just going to come in and reinforce some of the darks that we've got going on. So I want to put in a little bit of strong dark through here.
that's it. All right, I think I'm done. Do I need any body color? I think I missed a couple of little bits on the um, beak, so I'm just going to tap in a little bit of light here, which we did get most of it, but I just want to put a little bit of light there. Just a little bit on here, which I missed. Okay, nothing much, nothing too serious. A little bit of light down on this part of the beak here. Of the slightly bigger brush, the number five, just put in a little bit of dark in here. Just mottle it up a little bit so that it's not one color. We don't want to replace one color with the other, as I said before. Just going to break it across the top, dry brushing the effect as that comes down and dries into that red there. Just good. I'm happy with that. I really am. I've enjoyed this one. And I hope you guys have too. I'm just going to sign this one. There we go. Do that again. Okay, everybody. One portrait of a pelican completed. Now, I had a whole heap of fun doing it. And as you are well aware, I almost lost the complete painting through stupidity and carelessness halfway through. But... It also shows you how you can get out of it and get out of trouble. And we did just that and we brought the painting to what I think is a successful conclusion. And I hope you agree with that. I had, as I say, I had a lot of fun with it. Now, the reference for this will be over on my Patreon. It will be free for you guys to download and use. Have a go at this one and put your versions over on the Painting with Paul Lapps page over on Facebook. Love to see what you're doing with this and any other of my tutorials and if you have enjoyed this then please give it a big thumbs up it really does help the channel grow and at the same time if you're not a subscriber please subscribe to the channel again it costs you nothing to do that but once again you are helping the channel to reach a lot more or a much greater audience around the world and the thing is that i've noticed that not all of those that watch are subscribers and not all of my subscribers are getting notified as and when a video is aired so it really is worth you clicking that bell icon as well and that will ensure that you get notified as and when each video comes out uh, which is at the moment every fortnight and at the same time i love to see you over on the Patreon. Check it out because the references, as I said, will be there to download and use. But while you're there, why not check out the Patreon? There's a lot on offer. There's nearly 200 videos, full length, fully narrated for you to get involved with. And a private community page for you guys to air your paintings and have a chat with me and get in contact. So well worth looking at. And I'd love to welcome you as my latest patron moving forward that'll be fantastic in the meantime i'm going to get ready for a new painting i'm not sure what it's going to be yet i've got several ideas in my head that i want to do but don't forget next week it will be an oil painting on my oil channel followed by another watercolor the week after on this channel so please uh, set your um, likes and what have you for oil and watercolor that'd be fantastic have you subscribe to both channels and help them both grow in the meantime take care everybody before i waffle on and put you all to sleep have fun enjoy your painting wherever you are stay safe take care bye bye
<laughs> you can never stop fussing when you're painting like this. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.